Hi, welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at in the world. I uh, want to thank you for joining the webinar here today. Uh, my name is Gary Gower. I am the partner development manager here at Lead Forensics, and I kind of uh, oversee new partner recruitment here in North America. Um, but joining me on the webinar is my friend Tyler Witt here. He's senior sales manager here in the United States. Um, we will be using the questions function of this webinar, which should be located to the right. Um, and we'll be saving those towards the end. So if any questions do pop up, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, but I guess to kind of kick things off, since we're going to be talking about rapport, how was your weekend, Tyler? <laughs> it was good, Gary. Uh, first, I uh, definitely appreciate, you know, taking time to do this um, for the audience here and everything. But no, I had a good weekend. Got a lot done. And uh, starting what I think I would say half the country is probably doing right now is involving their home. Uh, we're doing the remodel side, so we're not moving, but <clears throat> a lot of stress, but eh, what's living if you don't have some stress to it, right? I definitely do not envy that, but let's yeah. <laughs> jump into things. And I guess probably the, the best place to start, um, you know, what is rapport to you? Uh, I guess it is a good place to start. So I guess for me, the best way to think of rapport is just to think of a connection, right? So uh, I suppose people that feel connected, they just tend to trust each other and uh, I guess ultimately going to share a bit more. So for me personally, I think of rapport as someone genuinely enjoying speaking with me. They, they trust me, they value my input and, eh, you know, let's hope that maybe even a little bit of respect in there, right? Um, but honestly, I think, I don't know, maybe it's much simpler than that and they just like me, uh, you know? So obviously, I guess obviously like this is something you are going to build throughout the entire process from the cold call to discovery to solution all the way through, you know, to hopefully them becoming a customer. Um, I guess it's not about simple rapport section of your intro, but that said, this is, you know, and ultimately what we're talking about today is like, how can we start that off on the right foot, right? So how can we get the, the right starting point so that we build that rapport fast and once it is built, you know, then it is vital to maintain it so you know why why is it so important to build rapport fast uh well good question again <laughs> so i'd say two reasons right so number one people that like you tend to buy from you right so there's a classic saying in sales that you know all things being equal people buy from people they like and all things being unequal still buy from people they like right so if we think about that the simple act of people liking you actually increases your odds of getting the sale so things like price product you know even economic wins are all almost i mean out of the salesperson's hands right so those are something we as salespeople can't control but we absolutely can control how we make a person feel and those salespeople, right the ones that make someone feel i guess good are always gonna have a leg up on even the most knowledgeable salesperson, you know, they're up against. This is why anybody that, you know, knows me or, you know, reads anything that I've published, it's why I have charm as my number one rule of sales, right? So that's number one, but I guess secondly, you know, if build rapport, break resistance, right? So a lot of people would have heard this notated as like BRBR. BR. So basically in sales, Gary, you, you're going to be asking a lot from people. You're going to ask for time, introduction, information, you know, I guess ultimately money. And anyone that has ever gotten the, you know, let's just move on, right? We've all had that dreaded, like, oh, it's great, Gary, let's, let's just move on. During discovery knows exactly what I mean here about that resistance, right? So they just simply hadn't, right? Or we just simply hadn't built rapport. So that prospect keeps their guard up and high. This friction will last through the entire process if you don't win them over fast. So, and it's hard to see, you know, a sale coming from someone that isn't even willing to engage with like basic conversation with you at the get go. Oh, absolutely. And and we've all, you know, unfortunately been on the other side, uh, you know, trying to buy from someone that we didn't like. And it's it's very painful. You know, sometimes it can even, you know, bring up competitors when you maybe have not have thought of others uh -huh. uh, up yeah. until that point. Um, so <laughs> this is an interesting one. You know, there's been a, a lot of talk in recent years about relationship uh, and it being out of style. You know, most notably the challenger sale says that the, the relationship salesperson is the least effective. Do you think that's true? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, not even in the slightest. 
like, look, I, I mean, I could go into the flaws and some of the challengers, salesperson, right? That like perfect combination of all these other characters. Um, but suffice it to say, relationship is never a bad thing. It just isn't, right? I, I guess the important comment for me to make would be, there's a huge difference between a relationship you're going to have with say your family, right? Your loved ones, your family, your closest friends, all that. And the relationship you're going to have with like a prospect or a client. Uh, I had a coach early on, you know, one of my sales coaches early on asked me how many, you know, of your clients, right? So how many of your current past clients, whatever, have ever sent you a Christmas card? How many of them have called you on your birthday? How many, you know, did I invite to my wedding? Right. And the answer is none. <laughs> right. Like none. That just doesn't happen. I mean, sure. Uh, and I, you and I were talking about this a while ago. Right. Of course, we've gotten thank you cards. I've definitely gotten thank you cards. I've sent thank you cards. Right. But there's a big difference there. And, and we want to respect those boundaries. Right. Now, what is true, I guess, is that just like any relationship, trust, communication and respect, they are paramount to success. So it's not about making friends. It's about earning and giving trust and, like I would say, hopefully respect, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can solidify those with the prospect, now you're setting yourself up for, uh, you know, a very successful process overall. Yeah, it's crazy because I actually re remember, you know, the, the first time I got a thank you card from somebody that, you know, I signed up for a very large contract and <laughs> let me tell you, it was not the easiest of processes. There was a lot of technical hurdles that we had to overcome, um, but we ended up, you know, coming to an agreement and they came on board as a, a really solid partner. Um, but I got a thank you card and I was kind of confused why. So I reached out and was like, hey, what was this for? And he was like, dude, that was a, you know, a, a major process, but I'm so glad I got to do it with you. I don't think we would have been able to accomplish this if me and you oh, didn't yeah. get along so well. And so, you know, it was, it was really enlightening to see the, the power and the strength of what a really good relationship can be, even in times of stress and difficulty. No. Yeah. So, you know, now that we've kind of established that rapport is important, obviously, uh, you know, what are some of the, the basic steps that you, you know, teach and coach to build great rapport quickly? Yeah, I mean, first, first of all, you're on that thank you card. Those are always big deals, right? Remember those for the rest yeah. of our lives. I mean, you know, first and foremost, it's, it's prep. Right. So I think the number one thing that I'm, I'm coaching, you know, salespeople as they come in, they start getting on the phone is just that prep. Right. So do your homework before a call, know who you're talking to, but but be prepared, just like for every part of the sales process, you know, rapport and in that first impression piece, you, you do want to prepare for that as well. So what kind of stuff can you prep for then? Um, yeah, I mean. I've always kind of coached around five basic areas, right? Uh, so what this is what was taught to me. And honestly, I find it's a really easy place for people to get started. So the five very basic areas are going to be, so location number one, <clears throat> it's like where are they located? You know, is it somewhere you've been? Is it somewhere you want to go? Um, you know, maybe there's a school there that you're familiar with. Uh, maybe, you know, where they went to school, someplace you're, you're from or familiar with, right? So, you know, is that somewhere that interests you in some way, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So location. Number two, family. Now, this is a careful one, Gary. <laughs> I'm not saying go to Facebook, stalk <laughs> these people. Um, you know, if they've got pictures of their family, but it's only on like, you know, Facebook or some of these other more, you know, um, private so sort of social media platforms, probably steer away from it, uh, stare away from it. But there are a lot of people that, you know, are going to bring up their family on their business's website or on LinkedIn posts, right? So you see that a yeah. lot um, because it's an important part of maybe their motivator or who they are. Maybe it's a family owned business even. So maybe you have a, you know, somebody that's a proud parent and they're just, you know, posting pictures about it or whatever. Like, absolutely. That's all fair game. Um, or to I saw, to interrupt for just a second, because it was yeah. absolutely hilarious. I saw a VP of marketing on a client's website and it was a picture of their pup. <laughs> so I was yeah, like, I'm going to get the VP of marketing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And as a, a dog owner, like dogs are absolutely part of the family. So same with cats. I own a cat as well. So no hate there. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're right there. Right. So like, so, so family is a great one. Um, and then, you know, you talk about that is uh, sports there. So sports, I mean, a big part of a lot of people's lives, right? So maybe the town that they're in has a major sports team. Uh, did they post something on their website or LinkedIn about sports? Did they go to school, you know, that has a big sports program, right? Like this actually is a big one for me because if I talk to somebody 
anywhere close to a Big Ten school because I went to Iowa. I'm going to be bringing that up on a call. You know, we we are going to be talking about, especially if they went to Ohio State. I'm going to be, you know, tell them how jealous I am <laughs> of what of going to a school with a successful program. So uh, yeah. definitely have a little bit of envy there, right? So so big one for me, right? Um, and then you know, I guess you got weather, right? So weather, this is a classic in my opinion. The weather is one of the easiest things in the world to talk about, bar none. Right. People have been talking about weather for thousands of years. And I remember, you know, and it's not just about like, oh, hey, Gary, do you have weather? I've got weather. Oh, wow. <laughs> Poor, right. <laughs> right. Like about genuinely being interested. And, and I always think back. Right. Because people will give this one a hard time. But I remember when I was young, I I'd go to the grocery store and, and go on a little tangent here. But I go to the grocery store with my grandma. I remember how easily she could talk to anyone about something so simple as the weather. And this is in the middle of summer when every day is just nice and sunny and this and that, right? It right. could have been, so I mean, it could honestly be the most average, like just partly cloudy day. And my grandmother would strike up a conversation with the bagger at the grocery store. <laughs> 30 minutes later, they'd still be talking. She'd know about their family, their kids. I mean, and there's a pretty good chance they're, uh, going, you know, coming over for Sunday dinner at the yeah. end of this, right? So don't underestimate the power of, you know, uh, weather as kind of a jumping. And then the one you brought up lastly is weekend, right? So if you truly can't think of something, Gary, talk about, right? How the was cheap weekend? Coaches, how was your weekend, right? Uh, so that's, I mean, that's the default, right? It's Monday or Tuesday. How was your weekend? Do anything fun. Tuesday or Thursday or Friday, uh, weekend's almost here. Any plans for the weekend? So yeah, you got location, family, sports, uh, weather and weekend and all of those are basically things you can kind of prep before the call. So I'll throw in a, a sixth one there and it's kind of one of my personal favorites because um, as you know I like food um, but <laughs> I like to bring up food you know especially if it's a midday meeting it's like oh what did you have for lunch uh, yeah. what are you having for lunch this is what I had um, if it's the end of the day oh you got any dinner plans what are you guys doing um, because it's really hard to find somebody that can be grumpy about food um, <laughs> but even if they are, you can use that as kind of a jumping off point of, you mm -hmm. know, oh, have you ever tried Mediterranean food or, you know, I had a really nice curry last night and it can just create dialogue and you're, you're now talking about something that's not business related. And yeah. that's where, you know, those, you know, opportunities to build rapport actually kind of come from. Yeah. I, I mean, and I think your point there that you're making is, is absolutely correct, right? like as long as you're genuinely interested in anything right and that's the real key it's that genuine genuine interest right so even food or you know it can be anything right uh cars uh yeah i mean just you name it as long as you're genuinely interested in that topic it's a good jump off for the the conversation right and it's kind of like because again we're talking about rapport you know analogous to the relationship and a good thing with any or good you know reminder for any relationship if you have to force it that's not really a good sign <laughs> right so the worst thing you ever want to do is just talk to some uh <clears throat> talk about something that either you know nothing about or you truly don't care about because that's just they're, they're gonna sense that right if you take sports for example um you know you may get on the phone like if, well talking to a partner not too long ago out of LA right now the big news uh, around LA is the Super Bowl right the Rams yeah. winning the Super Bowl all that so I say congrats on the Super Bowl and they you know and I wanted to congratulate them because they uh, had a picture online of them wearing one of the jerseys so I gave the congratulations and it was you know very excited yada yada but right it's a risk for me because I don't really know that much about football right so I know enough to give the congratulations but if they come back and start talking about players this that and the other like it, it is a gamble for me. So you want to be careful that you're only talking about something that you genuinely have interest or knowledge in. And, and again, like, you know, they start talking about whatever it is. If you don't know something about it, don't fake it, <laughs> right? <laughs> it will know that you're faking it. And if you're faking something, that's not a good start for relationship either, right? right. You don't want to think somebody, somebody's one thing only to find out later that they're another. So to, to your, you know, point is like, find something you truly are genuinely interested in right so my example yep gave the congrats on the super bowl he said something i literally didn't know these players but i used it to pivot into college football because he'd gone to a school that was a rival of where i went to school so i was able to pivot that over to a successful one but you know again it's only if you have that genuine interest it can really be about anything 
Yeah. <laughs> to that point, I will probably never bring up or ask anyone about college basketball. There's just way too many things going on. I've never filled out a bracket <laughs> in my life. I, I would, if somebody started talking about that, I would be like a deer in the headlights. Um, uh, but, yes. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, know I know the feeling. I know the feeling. But it's like you always say, right? One of your favorite expressions is, uh, you know, nobody cares how much you know until you, they know how much you care, right? So again, yeah. that's that, you know, the genuine interest in something about them or a topic, it does show through. So kind of on the on the flip side of that, then we, we've all had that moment on a sales call where someone's, you know, giving you very little or they're very guarded. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you kind of recommend then? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly like in my experience, it's very few and far between that you actually get somebody that just gives you nothing. Like, you know, like a question you ask earlier, uh, any plans for the weekend? And they say, nope, right? Just like that, <laughs> right? Like that's pretty few and far between. I mean, as humans, we are social creatures. That's pretty, you know, that's pretty taboo to just be that rude to somebody up front. Um, and if they are like, look, let's all be real. You can't sell everybody, right? <laughs> so you might just like, um, may want to do a quick qualifier or two and move on with your life. But uh, yeah, typically, you know, they at least give you something, right? So typically they're going to say like, no, not really, you know, just planning on relaxing or, you know, something like that. But okay, that's something like, I'll take that, right? And the key there is just to listen. And I mean, again, we keep talking about this genuine, you know, sincerity, authenticity, but you have to genuinely, you know, want to listen to them. And if you do, people will always give you at least some sort of window that you can use even in that example, you, you know, even the example there, they say like, uh, not really, just planning on relaxing. Um, I mean, you could say something as simple as, oh, those are some of the best weekends, right? Like, what do you do? Relax, are you in Netflix, are you booked? You know, that kind of thing, right? Um, yeah. Or ask some other follow-up about the weekend. I mean, if they, you know, like if they do need to relax, maybe they had a busy week, if they, I don't know, right? They're, anyway, like I, I hesitate there because even that, even something as little as, Oh, not really just plan on relaxing. There's so many little windows there you could take that kind of open up, right? But again, you know, rapport isn't about making that friend. So I do want to be, you know, be mindful that I'm also showing, you know, trust and respect and all that. And so if they are saying, nope, I'm just relaxing. Oh, you busy week. Yeah, I've been super slammed all week. Look, I also want to respect that. And I probably don't want to disregard their, you know, their time. Right. If that's how they're feeling, then I can use that as simple, build some respect and trust right there by saying, oh, no worries at all. I know how that goes. Well, let me do this. Let's jump into this and let's see if I can get you some time back today. Right. That yeah. right there, I'm going to build, you know, some goodwill with that person. Yeah. And that could also, you know, be a building block for future conversations, because like you said, is you know, rapport is something that you, you know, need to build quickly, yeah. but also through the entire process. So if you're, you know, continually you know, being responsible and respectful to that person, you know, the next time you connect, it's like, hey, are you still slammed? Have you been able to get your head above water? Are you just treading water? And you're acknowledging yeah. that you, you know, for lack of a better term, have compassion for the situation that they're in. And that's a huge, you know, way to build, you know, solid respect. But you yeah. said something there that kind of jumped out, you know, windows, you know, can you help us kind of understand what you meant by that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, very simple, like a, a window is just an opening, right? So, something <laughs> that allows, right? <laughs> no, no, uh, something that allows for you to ask more questions, like maybe deeper conversation around. So, you'll have them all throughout the sales call. Like, I mean, you literally, you're going to hear windows from beginning of end of process, uh, but it, it does all start during the intro while you're building rapport, right? Again, and that that all goes back into the listening. So let's say, for example, right, so we think about windows, some examples are uh, prospect, right? So yeah, you ask the prospect about the weekend. Um, so the one we've been talking about here, it's the easiest jump off. So, you know, good to use for this example here. Um, so you ask them any big plans for the weekend and they respond with like, yeah, actually I'm going to a wedding. So Gary, what's the window? The wedding? <laughs> the wedding, there you go, right? <laughs> so that's it, right? Um, you get asked them about, you know, who's getting married, uh, where's the wedding, you know, and have a conversation from there, right? Again, somebody says wedding to me, I think of a million different questions, a million different paths I can go by, and, you know, and it's just a natural conversation um, from there. So that's it. That's a window to me. It's the opening I'm going to listen for, and then they're going to kind of, you know, go down that path. So is it, you know, just as simple as listening for that window and then, you know, following it up with a question? 
Yeah, good question. I mean, right? <laughs> well, I mean, yes and no, right? <laughs> so, like, look, it all comes back to that, you know, are you genuinely interested in what they have to say? Right? So asking questions just to ask questions, no matter when it's, or, you know, where or when it's done in the sales process, that's a recipe for disaster. So people don't feel hurt if that happens. And look, people can tell when you're, you know, being insincere, disingenuous. So the whole point for me isn't just to go through the motions. It is to show them that I'm interested, right? That, that I am interested in them and I do respect them and that I do want to, you know, ultimately help them and, you know, provide a solution, right? And the easiest way to be interesting, you know, interesting is to be interested. And the easiest way to get respect is to show respect. So it's, it's like they always say, right? Like we were talking before. I mean, it just keeps coming back to that is like, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And you really do have to remember that during this report is that it's not about you flexing your muscle, not about, you know, oh, well, yeah, I've been there and I've heard it a million times where, you know, um, somebody talks about, oh yeah, no, I'm from this. Like, oh yeah, I've been there. It was awful. I ate this and I didn't like it. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Like, you know, it's not about you. It is about them throughout the entire process. So this is all, you know, really good advice and everything, but, you know, this is a fun one. Um, what do you do when there's multiple people on a call? Oh, panic, freeze up. Uh, <laughs> Cry uh, a little. No, I mean, yeah, I die inside for a moment. Um, no, I, ideally, look, like ideally speaking, you, you want to work the room, right? So we've all seen like, you know, comedians, like professional speakers, this and that, like really, really work that room. Um, but it, that can be pretty trickful or tricky, right? Like the meaning yeah. like, like you want to engage with each person in a meaningful way, but that's really hard to do. And especially if you're just kind of starting out, right? If you're just started learning the basics of like, you know, the rapport building, jumping into a call. So my advice there is just learning how, you know, you're working on the report and just pick one person, right? So pick one person early on and direct your, your conversation, at least at first towards them. Right. This is typically easy to do as a real, you know, like, so we're jumping on a Teams meeting or you're jumping on a Zoom meeting or, you know, whatever form you're using. Right. So you jump on. There's typically going to be one person that kind of stands out. Right. Or maybe they come into the call early. Maybe they're a bit more verbose. Like this is a huge leg up. So you want to watch for that and, and just basically pick them out and get a one on one you know, moment and build rapport. Right. So if you do that, if I kind of like, oh, how was your weekend, Gary? Right. Before everybody else kind of joins in and we start building, what's going to happen is, is that conversation should grow from there. So you, so I basically point the initial conversation at the one person and I'm kind of letting other people chime in. Um, and often, you know, companies, they're going to have their own clicks and they're going to have their culture and you can sort of pick up on this. Uh, and you're just sort of orchestrating a bit of banter again, like, you know, over time, those skill sets develop a bit more, but early on, just pick a person, start that conversation, and, and you're, you're hoping that the company culture, and again, if the people on the call aren't getting along, you know, you, your sales in trouble, <laughs> those kind of cultures don't tend to move forward. Typically in a sales process, they're really difficult to, um, but typically you're going to find people have their own company culture, their own click, and by you kind of engaging with one person, the rest will naturally sort of follow on top of that. Yeah, and it always has kind of traditionally been difficult, you know, in a, an inside sales role where you're on calls, you know, mm -hmm. phone calls. But I think with actually the advent of video, it's really helped in a lot of instances because now you can actually see the person. You can yeah. then, you know, potentially engage with whoever's, you know, focused on, on your content the, the most or maybe it's somebody that's, you know, drastically scribbling notes on something that you say and you can use that as you know key off points to kind of you know again focus on that one individual in the call no, um that's really cool, yeah. but yeah so you know what are some other things someone can do to kind of build rapport quickly um i guess a couple of things like you know first and foremost show up to the meeting early Right. If you're, you know, if you're on time, you're late. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't care if they're late and you're going to find that a lot. Right. Prospects, especially in the sales environment, they're, they're going to show up late. They're going to, you know, oh, sorry, I had this run over, blah, blah, blah. And I don't care if they can't manage their calendar. You have to demonstrate you can manage yours. Right. And in five minutes is like plenty early. Um, you know, it does show them you're a pro. And again, like 
you can manage your calendar. Uh, if you have a meeting beforehand, I really don't care. It's your job to get out of that meeting and get on to the next on time. That's just common etiquette, in my opinion. Um, I, I would say, and I think some people, you know, if, if you truly are uncomfortable or truly have fatigue, don't. But I, I do personally believe turning on your camera if, when you're doing the Zoom, Teams, Google Me, whatever. No. Uh, I know a lot of people do have the fatigue around this, but I do think it's important that people be able to see you. I mean, this was, I've done outside and inside sales, hands down, outside sales, it's just a bit easier. You've got a real human connection there. Inside was always challenging because you just have that phone, you just hang up. Um, although I do think we should bring in the hang up now, it's just be flipping down your laptop. But either way, that's, that's a side <laughs> note, right? But I, um, I totally think the, the, the uh, back to the, you know, what I was saying a second ago, I think the videos yeah. has, has helped us as salespeople. Yeah, because- absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the hardest things when I, you know, first started, you know, inside phone sales. I'm not going to yeah. say how many years ago, 15. Um, <laughs> it was it was conveying that excitement, and you had to like be, yeah. you know, so loud, so rambunctious, just to even have a fraction of that be conveyed through the telephone line. Now I can wave my hands, I can be all over the place in a video, and 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 yeah. actually make that connection with someone, and they can connect with me. And I, I felt I've built some of the stronger relationships in my career through video chat. Yeah. No, 100%. And, and, you know, and I don't think they have to turn theirs on, right? That's their choice. But I, yes, I 100% agree with you. I do think from, you know, an inside sales reps position, like have that camera on, which kind of, you know, leads into one of the other things I was thinking there, which is like dressing sharp, right? Mm-hmm. Like, look, you know, like it or not, your, your clothes, they do communicate volumes about who you are as a person, right? There's a really good uh, bit by Tom Papa where like, you know, people like they made choices, they put stuff back, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, so, so it's not, and it's not like, look, this isn't a fashion show. It's not what they care about fashion, um, but it is more about what you're communicating, you know, e- even if it's in, unintentional or unconsciously through those choices. So, you know, the way I've always said it kind of coaching sales reps, right. Is like, look, the actor in the right costume, right, moves and speaks differently, portrays it better, mm-hmm. right? We are the same as salespeople. Your clothes do tell a story. So if you want to show that your work is clean, sharp, and to the point, I do think you need to dress sharp and, you know, well-pressed clothes as well, right? Um, and then I think lastly maybe here is smile. So the other thing I think of, you know, I'm thinking back to the, it's funny, I'm, I was thinking back to some of the, just the it was kind of when I was an outside sales, some of the advice I'd get on greeting, you know, customers or prospects. But even when I moved to inside sales and smiling was a big one, right? So it can never be overstated, I think, how important a smile is. Uh, so people associate happiness with success and likability, right? People can hear that in your voice. And when they see you smile, especially when we're on camera, right? When they see you smile, yeah. they immediately do associate you, you know, with being happy and therefore successful, et cetera, right? Um, I do think that's kind of an immediate advantage when trying to build rapport. It's kind of the opposite of what happened the other night when we went out for dinner. Um, you know, the waitress walked up and she wasn't like frowning by any means, but she kind of looked like that straight faced emoji, just can I take your order? Da, 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 da. Yeah. And like, you know, our group walked in and we are you know, it's our group. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it, it kind of was just like, killed the mood a little bit now obviously we didn't let it you know last that long and we had her dying and chuckling you know you know five minutes into you know seating us but um it's very it's it's crazy how quickly even something like that can impact a situation yeah anybody that's ever been to like a really nice restaurant or you know whatever they they know this is different experience so servers they move communicate differently and you know as a server like for every one customer you may lose because, oh, you're, you know, a little over the top. Maybe, you know, you tell these jokes that whatever, oh, I don't need that kind of stuff. For every one you lose or, or you know, tip, you, you may get um, diminished, I should say. Because of it, you'll get 20 people that give you bigger tips. So, yeah. absolutely. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the, uh, you know, bring that personality immediately. So, I guess to kind of wrap things up, you know, any last points that you'd like to make? Uh, yeah, look at that. It has been almost a half hour. Um, yeah. I think the last thing is, and I was kind of thinking of it there while you were saying that example, is that you do want to remember that the person, like you are speaking to a person, 
right? And I mean that, like this is a good place to just, I guess, take a moment and remind everyone that we are not in the sales business, right? This is not the sales business, it is the people business. Yeah. You were never talking to Amazon or Microsoft or, you know, Betty's Clothing Apparel or Bob's Burger. <laughs> it's a great show, by the way, right? Like you're not talking to those businesses, right? You are talking to a person, mm -hmm. right? You, you want to respect that person. Listen to their vocabulary. Use it. Mirror it. If they have pronouns posted online, use them. You know, mm -hmm. it's easy to get ahead of your skis and look ahead. Next step, right? Who's my DM? What obstacles am I going to face here? Uh, but I, you know, try and be in the moment and connect with the person you're speaking to. So at the end of the day, that is to me, what rapport, again, we said earlier, but what rapport truly is, it's connecting with somebody. Once yeah. you've made that connection, I, the, I promise you, I mean, the rest will kind of take care of itself. All great things. And, you know, really appreciate you taking the time here on this terrific taco Tuesday, which is what I'm having for dinner, by the way, going back to food being my favorite topic. That's yeah. why we're only viewing this part of, of me as well. Um, but yeah, I <laughs> really appreciate you jumping on here with us today. Um, you know, had a couple, you know, final things for, uh, you know, everyone that joined us here today. Um, you know, I know we've been talking about rapport and relationship. If you'd like to see it in action, um, and, you know, build a relationship with someone on our team. You know, we've got this offer up here. Um, happy to, you know, run you guys through a demonstration of our software, give you a two week free trial, no catch, no commitment. We're not asking for credit cards or anything like that. Um, and basically what we'll be able to do is you'll be able to see the exact businesses that are hitting your website off the back of your marketing efforts. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in taking that, well, we have a poll here um, that you can answer very easily. We'll give everyone a couple seconds to choose yes, because that's the only appropriate answer, obviously. Well, yeah. I have enough opportunities at the moment. Too, the word's too busy shouldn't be in a salesperson's vocabulary here. <laughs> Hire more salespeople. <laughs> And if you'd like to connect with Tyler or myself, we'll throw up our LinkedIn profiles here on the screen. And I appreciate everyone's time today and wish you all a fantastic rest of the week. Thank you, everybody. Gary, thank you very much for hosting this. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us.